Hey everyone, I'm back with a fun parallax scrolling tutorial inspired by a website that I stumbled upon a few weeks ago. And uh, what happened on that website is as we scrolled down, we were presented with some text that rose up uh, from mountains. I kind of copied the idea with the, with the mountains. And the fog kind of comes through and the text comes up. And it, it is some dramatic text. Uh, but the idea is that the text is sandwiched between two layers and it rises through and creates a really smooth, uh, really, really elegant effect that's very light on the browser. It's really not hard for the browser to render this, so it comes out really smooth. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I did this. And it's going to involve a little bit of Photoshop, but I assume you're all Creative Cloud subscribers, so you should have Photoshop on your machine. If you don't, you could substitute another photo editing application. Essentially, all we need to do is take an image and uh, cut it in half. Uh, effectively cut it in half creating a smooth gradient that uh, manifests itself as as fog or adding the fog if you have a photograph that doesn't have any fog in it so here's my muse file we're gonna come back to this after a little bit of Photoshop work so I'm gonna open up Photoshop and show you what my document looks like here this is the complete document but essentially the way it started off was just an image with some rolling hills or, or mountains with some fog going on and I went about this two ways and I was surprised the hard way where I actually put in a good amount of work um, ended up being the way that didn't look as good as the easy way so let's head back over to my finished document and I'll show you that I have this layer here called cutout and if I turn off all the other layers you can see that I actually went through and cut out the mountain creating the separate layer uh, this one turned out to not look so good and if I turn on the background and the text as I move the text through uh, you can see that it just doesn't look right. I mean, we're missing the fog, and I thought, okay, I'll add the fog back in. But what ended up being even easier and uh, turning out to look a bit better uh, was this other option here. So let me show you what that looks like again. And uh, oops, wrong layer. That gives you an idea of what that layer looks like, though. Uh, let me move the text through, and you can see that it creates that same smooth, uh, graduated effect that we saw in the in the final Muse document. Uh, so the way I did that is uh, going over to this blank document where I just have this background layer. Um, I drag the background layer down onto the new layer button to duplicate that layer. And then I press the new layer mask icon, which is the circle in a square. And when I clicked on that, it gave me this white box. And the way layer masks work is that using a layer mask, you can paint black wherever you want pixels to become transparent. And you can paint white wherever you want pixels to become opaque. So I grabbed my gradient tool, and using the gradient tool, I went up to the toolbar and chose a white to black gradient. And by painting on the canvas, you can see on my layer mask here that I am blacking out half of the frame and whiting out half of the frame. And in between, it is graduated. That's what a gradient is. It's the transition between the white and the black. So essentially, by dragging across the fog here, and I'm holding the shift key uh, to do so, I'm creating a brief gradient that transitions from the sky which I'm cutting out to the ground which I'm leaving in and that creates a layer that looks something like this when I turn off the background layer you can see that this top layer which I will rename uh, let's say mountains with fog uh, that layer there is uh, sort of vanishing into uh, a background layer below and that background layer below is is going to be separate in our muse document and the text will be sandwiched in between so going back to look at this layer in greater detail you can see that there is an outline of a mountain back there and the outline of the mountain back there is going to be on top of our text which is going to make the text look kind of see-through so we don't really want that so you can either grab a little bit of blue uh, in the case of this photo um, or you could even grab uh, the eraser tool and you can start erasing the uh, seam of the mountain there because having a hard edge like this mountain on top of text uh, you'll be able to see it so let me actually go and grab this text from this document and drag it over to the other one uh, so let me sandwich it in between on my layers panel and you'll be able to see it's kinda hard to tell but right in here you can see the mountain coming through the text and you'll notice on my final document I corrected that and I corrected that by adding a little bit of blue and erasing the edge of the mountain which just creates sort of a gentle fog uh, and that, again, that's going into more detail than you have to go into. I mean, first time around, if you're no Photoshop expert, um, then you don't have to get into such great detail. If you want to, if you want to go into great, great detail, then you could do this uh, and cut out the layer below, uh, or cut out the the top layer that is uh, revealing the layer below. 
And in doing that, it's going to take a long, long time, and it's going to look like this, where you just have this hard, stark edge. And you'll have to go and add your artificial fog anyways. So I hardly think that's worth all the trouble. I would say use the gradient tool if you have a, a straight horizon line like this. Um, and then you can go about it that way. You could also do this with a picture of the ocean or a picture with any flat horizon uh, using the gradient tool if you have fog or uh, just cutting it out manually if you don't have any fog. So now that we've arrived at this, uh, we've got something that we can bring over to Muse. We have this top layer uh, with, with the gradient on it. We have this middle layer with the text. And you could always use a text box in Muse. You don't have to create the text in Photoshop. And then we have the background layer where we just have the image. So getting it over to Muse, here's the, here's the fun part. If you're using Adobe Photoshop CC and you're all up to date, you're on the 2014 version, uh, what you're able to do is you're able to name your layers with a file extension at the end. So I'm going to name this background.jpg. That'll make for a smaller file. I'm going to do some dramatic text.png because I have to maintain the transparency. And mistyclouds.png because that has transparency as well. Now once you've done that, and you've saved your document. I've got my document saved here in the finder, mistyhills2.psd. Back in Photoshop, you can go to File, and you can choose Generate Image Assets. And when you choose Generate Image Assets, what it's going to do is back over here in the finder, creates a folder, and inside that folder, it's generating those assets with the file extensions that I provided in the Layers panel. So by naming those layers, I'm actually telling Photoshop to generate files uh, in that format. So I've got my background JPEG, I've got my foreground layer where I've got the, the gradient with a little bit of smudgy blue and white all over it, and I've got my some dramatic text. So now I'm ready to bring this stuff over to Muse. So let me open up Adobe Muse and show you how this is structured. We've got this box here filled with an image, we've got this image here just dropped right on there with scroll motion, and we've got this box here filled with an image. So let's build it from scratch. I'm going to go to this blank white document and I'm going to start with a rectangle tool. I'm going to draw a small rectangle and then I want that to be a 100% page width rectangle. So then no matter how large or small the end user's browser is, uh, it'll fill the width of their screen, at least up and until um, the end of the image because the image is not infinitely wide. Uh, the other thing you might be thinking is, well, you can have the image scale. You can have the image scale to fit the browser width. But in my case, that won't actually work. Uh, because my images are different sizes, I ended up with a bigger square and a smaller rectangle. Uh, that is not going to work. We're going to have to leave them at original size. So if your images turn out to be the wrong size, you can go back to Photoshop and resize them. Uh, mine, in my case, let's actually look at how wide this document is. I'm not sure how wide this image actually is. More info doesn't show me anything, so I'll go back over to Photoshop and I'll pull up the image size. Uh, mine is 3361 pixels wide. Yours does not have to be 3300 pixels, but the advantage to having an image this large is that even leaving it at original size and not allowing it to scale to fill the browser, it's still going to be wide enough to fill even the widest browser on the widest computer display, like a 27-inch iMac. So. Uh, it's it's important to note that you want it to be pretty wide, but not too wide. Probably somewhere between 2,500 and 3,500 pixels wide, I think would be ideal. So now that I have my box created on my canvas in Adobe Muse, I'm going to scoot it up to the top. I want it to start at the top of the browser. That's just a creative thing. That's not a requirement. I'm going to remove the stroke around the box. I do not want a stroke around the box. And I'm going to remove the fill in the box by setting the fill to this white square that has a red diagonal line through it. That means no fill. Because I'm going to be using an image fill. So the next thing I want to do is set this box to be 100% page width. So that way, at least it makes room for the image to fill the browser, even if the image is not scaling to fill the browser. We still want it uh, to be wider than the available space of the browser. So with that said, I'm going to go over here to Transform. And you're looking for this little icon. This is the 100% page width icon. If your screen is big enough, you'll see it directly across the toolbar. If it's not, you'll want to click on Transform and then click on this icon. So now this box snaps to the edges of the available space. And it is demonstrating that it will fill the browser. So now we got to get our image in there. So I'm going to click the word Fill on the toolbar. I'm going to choose Add Image. And once I've chosen Add Image, I get my Finder. So I find my folder, which came right up for me. Uh, you'll have to go and navigate and find that folder. And then I'm going to choose my background image first. So now that I have my background image dropped in there, I'm going to make the box tall enough so we can see the whole thing. 
So now that the box is big enough and we can see the entire image, another important thing to note, I'm going to go back to fill, and this is important when you're laying the two images on top of one another. Fitting, you want set to original size, not scaling, not tiling, not anything else. We want original size. Then we want the position to be anchored top center. We don't want it to be center center, we want it to be top center. And the reason has to do with scaling these boxes and having the images shift. Because remember, we're laying two images on top of one another. And when we do that, we have to make sure they don't shift around. So that way they remain aligned. So we're going to do top center at original size. And then coming back to this, I'm going to hold the Option key, which is the Alt key if you're on a PC. And I'm going to drag this box in order to duplicate it because I'm going to have two of these, one on top of the other. Now I've got my two different images, so on this top box that I just created by duplicating, I'm going to click File. I'm going to click on my background.jpg to switch it for my mistyclouds.png. So now I have one image on top of the other. So you can see as I move this around that this one is an abbreviated version. This was the, the stunted one uh, from which the text is going to arise. So now I have to line it up. I'm going to scoot this up a little bit and I'm going to line it up. You can kind of see how the mountains up here and the mountains down here line up. So I'm going to scoot it up and I'm just going to eyeball it. Uh, for my purposes it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to line it up there and now I think we're good. I'm going to preview it in the browser just to make sure it looks okay. Looks good to me. I can't see a seam. If I could see a seam, I'd go back and make an adjustment, but I cannot, so that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna close this now, and I'm gonna add my text layer. So I'm not gonna create a rectangle to do that. I'm just gonna go over, and I'm gonna drop in my text layer. I'm gonna drop it directly on my canvas, and I don't want it to be too gigantic. I'm gonna make it about this big, and I'm gonna position it and see how that looks. Maybe even make it a little bigger. And I'm going to position it so that it ends up right around here. And then next, I need to make sure that it's behind my, uh, my foreground mountains. Uh, right now, it's on top. It's the most recent thing that I added to the document, so it's on top of everything. And if I scoot it down, you can see that. It's not coming up from behind the mountains. Um, I'm going to leave it down here for a moment so you, can, so you can actually see what happens. And I'm going to select my mountains uh, at the bottom, which are going to be my top layer. And I'm going to hold Shift and Command, which will be Control if you're on a PC. And I'm going to hit the right bracket key on the keyboard. The right bracket key is the one two keys to the right of the letter P on your keyboard. So I hit that right bracket and that jumps it to the front. So now that I've done that, I can't really grab my, uh, my text layer there. It's a little trickier to grab it, so I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to scoot the text up here, and then I'm going to do that again. There are ways to get around that, but um, just for the sake of keeping it simple, uh, I'm going to go back and move the text up first. So cool. So now I've got my foreground mountains in front, background mountains in the back, and my text sandwiched in the middle. And you're welcome to open up the Layers panel and confirm that using the Layers panel. You can see I have this rectangle down here, I have this rectangle up here, and I've got my text layer in the middle. So that kind of confirms it, makes sure that everything's looking good. So now let's preview into the browser again. Previewing into the browser, nothing's moving, nothing's fancy. We're not actually getting that parallax motion yet. So what we're going to do now is select our text layer, and with our text layer selected, I'm going to go up to Window because I don't see my scroll effects. I'm going to turn on the scroll effects here. Oh, I had them right over there. I didn't even notice on the toolbar there. So once you have the scroll effects pulled up, you're going to turn on motion for that layer because what we're doing is we're having the text move faster than the mountains, so it emerges from those mountains. So the very first thing is the vertical motion, that vertical speed. I'm going to set mine on 1.5, so it's going 150% the speed of everything else as I scroll. So for every 100 pixels I scroll, the text will scroll 150 pixels. That's what that means. My horizontal movement, I don't want any. I'm going to set that to zero. And then down here under final motion, I'm just going to make sure that that matches my initial motion. I'm not going to have the speed change halfway. I'm just going to have it go at a constant speed. So 1.5 and 0, 1.5 and 0, that looks good. And then the key position is going to determine how far from the top of the browser we will have to be for the text to show up just above this mountain, where I have it positioned here in the preview. If I go like this, then it'll be at the top of the mountain when the browser is way up here, when the top of the browser is way up here. I would like to have to scroll further so that we can watch it emerge from the top of the mountain. Because if we're scrolled way up here, we can't see the mountain where the text is emerging from when the text emerges from the mountain. 
So I'm going to scoot this down here. And you can fiddle with that. As you move that up and down, you'll notice that the event happens earlier or later, and you'll be able to play with that to do it visually. So now I'm going to preview it in the browser. And as we scroll, there it is. It's rising up from the mountain. Now I think that happens kind of late. I think it would be cool if we could see part of the mountain before we see the text rising. So that's what I'm talking about with that key position. So when you click on it, we get this little handle here. And if I drag this handle down, that means that the text won't be up here at the top of this mountain until the browser is down here near the top of this mountain. So let's preview it in the browser again. And as I scroll down, see how much later that happens? It's happening later now. Because now, until the top of the browser gets all the way here to the top of the mountain, the text isn't yet at the top of the mountain. See what I mean by earlier versus later? So if I scroll to the top, you can see that this does happen very gradually, but it does happen later. It definitely happens later than it did originally. And that allows me to see the text emerging from being behind the mountain to being above the mountain. So it's a pretty cool effect. I am really, really enthralled by this effect. I could pretty much scroll up and down for like an hour before I get bored. I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you do, please subscribe if you haven't already and head over to museresources.com. What I'm actually going to do for you guys is I'm going to take these asset files that I used uh, from my Photoshop file and I will put them online at museresources.com on the graphics page so you guys can download them and build this yourself or rewatch and follow along with the tutorial if you'd like. So please subscribe and I'll see you guys soon.